All right, stating a claim. In order for you to bring forth a claim, the company has to be civilly or criminally liable under TILA. You can't just say they violated you. Once again, your contract may be different from the next person's contract. So the way that I teach is going to be uh, foundational, right? It's going to be used for you to build your case and everything that you need to know off of what you know they can and cannot do, what you know your rights are, and then all the violations, you can state your claim from there. You can't state a claim that's not true because what once again, the, the, um, where was it? The consumer's claims and defenses may have been in your contract, and then it may be another one of you who didn't, right? So when it comes to stating your claim, this is really, really important because if you don't state a claim properly, your case will be thrown out and deemed as frivolous. So let's go over civil liability and criminal liability. Civil, civil liability is a legal obligation that requires a party to pay for damages or to follow other court enforcement in a lawsuit. Then you have criminal liability. You are likely to be held responsible for breaking the law, whether it be potential or actual responsibility. Criminal liability is considered to determine whether a person will be charged and sentenced. So civil liability, they have to do an action or, you know, pay some money back or, you know, they're more than likely financially responsible, responsible to you or liable to you. When it comes to criminal liability, um, this is when the law says, um, no, you're going to jail for this. You, we're not, you ain't paying no fine. You're going to jail. Okay. Failure to state a claim. Failure to state a claim is a defense asserting that even if all the factual allegations in a complaint are true, they are sufficient to establish a cause of action and the case should be therefore dismissed. Pay attention to cause of action because like they said, even if everything that they did to you was factual, <clears throat> Where in the law can you point them to to say, well, this is where they're liable under under me, and this is where my where my relief is, which will go over where your relief is later on in the um in the webinar. Fifteen U.S.C. sixteen forty civil liability, except as otherwise provided in this section, any creditor who fails to comply with any requirement imposed under this part, including any requirement under section sixteen thirty five of this title. Subsection F or G of section 1641 of this title or part D or E of this subject there with respect to any person is liable to such person. So this is where your um, the civil liability is going to come at, right? And then uh, we're going to go over that in a little bit. Under there is where you're going to get your relief, right? They're going to tell you what, um, what would be owed to you if they are civilly liable to you. In order to state a claim, you must have both the requirement and the violation within your claim. If you do not properly state your claim, it may be thrown out and considered frivolous. Also define each role. Remember when we went over, you're the debtor. Yes, you're the debtor under TILA. The financial institution is actually the holder in due course because they're in, um, they're the ones trying to collect payment from you. The holder in due course is the one that is um, have the, has the rights to enforce the instrument, and then the dealership is the seller and the creditor. Okay, and we're gonna get over that. We're gonna get into that later on in the video. So we went over 16 CFR 433.2. If the dealership is a holder of the contract, they are subject to all claims and defenses. Same thing with the seller. 
they're the seller, they're subject to all claims and defenses. If that is not stated, right, that could be fair, that can be unfair and deceptive if it is not disclosed within the contract. So if that, um, if this is not, if this is not in your contract, that can be unfair and deceptive. I, I how, 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 how would I know that I have rights to insert if it's not on the contract, if it's not on the face of the contract? Right, let's get into it. Relief. Here's where your relief is going to come in at, right? 15 USC 1640. And I'm going to bring up monetary relief and equitable relief because there's a difference in the two. Monetary relief, as used in this section, the term monetary relief means damages, costs, attorney fees, and other form of monetary payment. Equitable relief is distinguished from remedies for legal actions in that instead of seeking merely monetary damages, the plaintiff is seeking that the court compels the defendant to perform a certain act or refrain from a certain act. So that is the difference between monetary relief and equitable relief. And 15 U.S.C. 1640, we're going to get into, we're going to do that. We're going to get into the civil liability and where your relief is because this is where it is, right? This is where your relief is, okay? Either it's going to be any actual damages sustained by such person as a result of the failure or you're going to find your relief in here, right? Remember, everybody's contract may be different the way one dealership or financial institution violated you may not be the way that they violated someone else. So it's either going to be the actual damages sustained by a person as a result of the failure, or you're going to go in this section and find your relief, right? Um, so let's go back over that claim, right? So we're going to do ABC, ABC uh, dealership failed to meet the requirements of 12 CFR 1680 which is in violation of 15 USC 1630 and um, is civilly liable to me under 16 15 USC 1640 and I'm seeking out my relief under 1640, which is one of the two that I showed you. One of these. All right, let's get into pushback because 